Hi everyone, I'm Film Club reporter Maddie. And I'm Will, part of the uh, Film Club team here. So it's a big hi and welcome to the first afternoon of our live webcast in November. Yes, and a big hello to other schools that we know that are watching. Uh, Doxy Primary School, St Mary Abbott School and Queensbridge Primary. Uh, thank you for tuning in and anyone else who is watching please uh, tweet in your questions. Uh, it should be rolling along the screen at the bottom now. Uh, yeah, we want to know your questions, so get in touch. On today's show, we're taking a peek behind the scenes of costume design. That's right, and we're very lucky today to have two special guests uh, with us. First of all is uh, Vin Burnham, costume designer extraordinaire. Hello. And Hi, also Vin. Keith Ludwick, assistant curator of the New Hollywood Costume Exhibition of Victoria and Albert Museum here in London. Welcome Hello. to you both. Hello. Lovely for you, for you to join us. Um, first of all, Keith, uh, a lot of people want to know, and I'm going to ask the question, what is a curator exactly? Well, a curator really decides on what the content of an exhibition is going to be. So they, they visit their own collection, they visit other museums, other archives around the world. Yeah. They begin to think about what is the best way of telling a particular story. So in this case, the history of Hollywood costume design, 100 years of filmmaking. So we had to decide what would be the best examples to tell that story. And so you find things, you choose things, you go, and it's a real sort of, it's a real jigsaw puzzle. And you don't really know sometimes what the finished picture is going to look like. It's quite, quite an abstract ex experience. Mm. Um, but you try and piece it all together to, to make one whole exhibition because exhibitions of this nature don't come around very often and so you want to sort of have it the best yeah. told in the best way possible yeah so get the find and source the best examples to put it all together but it's quite a complex yeah. complex job yeah. and then you write all the um, all the uh, text all the information about all the objects so you bring all that together you research it and um, you write all that so that people can read about that and it has to be very sort of short quite usually museums have quite strict policies about how time frame of how long you're going to dwell, etc, etc. Um, and so you're really sort of in charge of all the kind of the content of the show. Brilliant, thank you. Perfect answer. Vin, which costumes do you think our audience will know you best for? Probably Batman. Um, I did the first two, I made the first two Batman costumes. Batman 1 and uh, Batman 2. Batman Returns, Tim yeah. Burton ones. So people may know those, although it was quite a long time ago. Uh, more recently, uh, Lady Gaga, I designed a dress for her for her Monster Ball World Tour. So Fantastic. people might have seen that. Yeah, I'm quite excited that we've got someone in the studio that has uh, made the Batman costumes. For me, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Um, sorry, go on, Maddie. <laughs> We're about to watch a film about the exposition. Any costumes of yours should we look out for? Of mine? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> in fact, I can't think if there's any of mine in there. Surely um, there's a Batman. Because I Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh, Catwoman. 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 Yes, Catwoman. Catwoman. Michelle Pfeiffer. Catwoman. 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 Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. There were quite a few of those. 63, actually. Gosh. 63 yes. Catwoman costumes. Yeah, because yeah. There, were, there was Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah. There were there was a um, acrobat, uh, a stunt double, and there was one other one I can't remember. Just another stunt. Yeah. Sixty three. Sixty three yeah. different wow. costumes. That's a great fact, actually. Yeah, wow. factory. Yeah. Wow, yeah. amazing. Time for us to reveal our exclusive sneak preview of the Hollywood Costume Exhibition and an interview with the curator, Deborah Nadulamin Landis. Well said. Hi, I'm Jess. And I'm Ellie. We're reporting here for Film Club. We're at the Victoria and Albert Museum, reporting from the Hollywood Costume Exhibition. It's really exciting to be here.
costume designer does. A costume designer designs costumes from the inside out. In other words, our role on any movie is to ask the question, who is it? Who is this person in the movie? First, costume designers have to discover who you are. It's pretty exciting. It's a very, very different kind of a job. What is the most challenging part of being a costume designer? Time and money, because if you can see that we, what we hope to do is to design from the inside out, so who are you, and have that kind of research and voyage of discovery every single time, go to the library if it's a period movie, go to um, way, way, way into our imagination if it's a fantasy movie and to look at other fantasy movies and try to discover what it is about the future that's going to be different. Or if it's a contemporary movie and we're doing a, uh, a movie about a college or a university and spending time taking pictures at a college or a university, which could be part of the research process. So all of that takes time. So how do you think the costume affects the way the actor performs? Well, let me put it this way. When you dress for school, you dress comfortably, you dress for your day. But if you were going to a wedding, would you wear the same clothes? No. Now, how I'm dressed now is different than my work-a-day clothes. And this connection between clothing, identity, you get getting dressed every day is the same way we dress actors to be characters in a movie, in a story. Do you have to work closely with the director to create a costume? Yes, I mean, uh, directors really are in charge of every single thing in a movie. What we do is we facilitate, we help the director create these these authentic people. But they're fictional people, but we help bring those people to life. How did you come up with the design for Indiana Jones's iconic costume? The director, Steven Spielberg, really had a very clear idea of what he wanted Indiana Jones to wear. So I had a very clear brief of what he should look like. But I didn't know he was gonna be iconic, and neither did Steven Spielberg, because the audience makes icons not designers and not directors. The audience has to fall in love with a character before that character can become an icon. We've had a great day here today. It's been really fun reporting for Film Club. We've seen so many things, but in the famous words of Dorothy, there's no place like home. Then, we just saw some amazing costumes at the v and Expo Exposition. Which types of costumes do you like best? To see done by other people or to do myself? Uh, both, I would say. Mm, both. Yeah. Uh, probably fantasy. Um, I'm not a period costume. Um, I'm not yeah. a historian of any kind. And I always love doing things where... To create something from scratch, yeah, almost, yeah. And to cheat if you can, um, you know, and to make something that hasn't been seen before, really. So, yeah, I, I'd say the genre I, I would like best yeah. is fantasy. It probably gives you more sort of um, free reign to, to design, Well, it? in some ways it does, but actually fantasy doesn't mean that you can do whatever you like. Right. 
because it's got to make sense. If it doesn't, it doesn't work and people don't believe it and people have got to believe it and mm. buy into, you know, this, this new um, thing that you've invented, whether it's in the future or, you know, a, another world. It, it, it does have to make as much sense as if it was a, a strict period piece. Okay. There we go. Um, the exhibition, by the way, is on until the 27th of January. Is that right? Are yes. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> if you're in London, come and have a look. Uh, Keith, you've done theatre costume design. Uh, how does that differ from uh, what we see on film sets and on films from costume design, or is it the same? Well, it's certainly the same research process for every mm. sort of project that you, you work on. I'd say for theatre, usually you're at a, at a distance from, from the stage. Um, theatre is, is lit in a very different way and the interpretation of theatre and plays yeah. and opera musicals can be quite different. I mean, film, I think, Vin, you'll probably agree, is there's obviously a lot of emphasis on, on the, on the close-up and obviously yes, the, the, yes. The, 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 how the actor is framed within the cinematic frame. Whereas in, in theatre, you're always going to see a whole, a whole person yeah. or a series of, of whole people. Um, and I think you can certainly sort of get away with more in theatre of particular sort of like techniques about how things are constructed. Of course, the actor always has to feel the character. That's very, mm. very yeah. important. Mm. But if you think about, say, a film like Elizabeth the Golden Age, where the detailing of how Kate Blanchett's character, the, the, the rough, for example, the yes. designer Alex Byrne came into the exhibition yeah. and was talking about the rough because that's about the close up. Mm. So mm. those are the primary sort of like major so things you really real have to Real intricate sort of think detail about. when it's a close up on the camera. And yes. Film. Yeah. yeah. Although I think that every detail mm. counts, whether mm. it's oh, yes, of film yeah. or theatre. You know, it, I used to work way back at Covent Garden for a designer called Nico Georgiadis who you could not believe the detail yeah. that went into costumes and accessories that you think, well, nobody's going to get any closer than 30 feet. Mm. And most people would be a lot further away than that, but it still all adds up. And this, You're painting you know, a whole picture as a, as, as a designer. You're always yeah. painting a yeah. picture, whether it be a stage picture mm. or a cinematic you know, a cinematic frame. You're putting yeah. everything into you know, that, that frame, and so everything... Every design is like an artist. Yeah. When you think of a blank canvas, it's the same thing. It is. The costume designer it's is painting it in exactly the same way that an artist is painting. So every, every single detail, including the chauffeur at the back, you know, you can't, oh, yeah. you know is, everything is painted in by the designer. Yes, and audiences will take it all on board, <coughs> whether it's mm. conscious or not. Mm. Mm. Yes. Well, fantastic answer. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I have a question for both of you. Um, do you have a favourite costume in the exhibition um, or one that you have designed? Um, favourite costume is very difficult for me to answer. <laughs> because smiling because they're, all, yeah. they're all favourites. Um, I mean, I'm also, I love fantasy, I love science fiction. And, um, you know, really the, the first film that had a big impact on me when I was, I was very young at the time was the very first Star Wars film that I saw yeah. in 1978, yeah. and I was a very young boy. But um, it was such a, a huge landmark moment in, in film. And um, it was very inspirational to see that kind of, mm. kind of film. So to get two costumes, Han Solo, who was kind of the coolest guy in the, in the yeah. galaxy at the time. <laughs> he was. And Darth Vader, I mean, that was an extraordinary piece of costume design. To get those in the exhibition was fantastic. But I also grew up with the golden age of Hollywood, watching old black and white movies, which I adore. And so to get some of those costumes was, was just fantastic. Mm. So, yeah, it's hard to answer, actually. <laughs> well, I was just going <clears throat> to say the one that's behind you mm. is totally iconic for me because I grew up with that. I don't know how old I was when I saw it, but yet very young. And so that image there and that costume to me is just, you know, something from from my childhood and I love everything about it, all the details. Yeah. I love the little the little zigzaggy things around the collar and the way they've put the straps cut on the cross as they say whereas all the other checks are straight. 
Um, that is probably my favourite, sentimentally anyway. Excellent, thank you. Now I think we're just going to go to another clip, is that right? Okay, uh, we'll be back in two. Wow, you see that was amazing, wasn't it? Moving dress. Yeah, so Lady Gaga, it must have been amazing working with her. It was, it was, uh, I, I came into the sort of rock and roll side of costume design very late in my career, but I'm so glad I did, um, because the, the difference between designing costume for a, a scripted character um, with, with Lady Gaga was that there was no script, there was no story, there was just her, her vision, vision yeah. and mm. therefore it could be abstract and uh, I loved that element and it was all done by remote control, texts, you know, conference calls, emails because she was in LA and I was in London. And you still came up with that, even without actually yeah. meeting in person at I, the time? I had yeah. a, a friend of mine that I worked with in LA who I got to go to make what is known as a toile, mm -hmm. which is a, a fitted shape that fitted her exactly. And she did that over there and sent it. And I've brought something to show you, oh, yeah. um, which Look is just a, a sample of what her dress was made up of. Is it right to touch it? Yeah? Of course, oh, yes. Wow. It was just a, really a, a mock-up. Yeah. And um, it's it's all plastic. Which so how did it how did it actually move within that? Well, I think costume, this yeah. one was it's called a hero. I think that's from the head. Yeah. Hero means it's the sort of main piece, um, and these were all on her head. Yeah. And they kind of opened and closed like that, which were. All like it was breathing almost. E yeah, yeah, exactly. And all operated by little um, m motors and things inside the head. <laughs> Very complicated, boy <laughs> stuff. And it was a huge team. It wasn't just me, big team. That's amazing, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just conscious we're um, running out of time, so we'll try and get our questions in there. Um, We've got a question. Uh, Keith, what is it like, oh this is for both of you, sorry, what is it like designing costumes for celebrities or a big name? Is it difficult or is it fun? Well, no, um, because you're dealing with actors. Yeah. Um, you have to sort of ignore the celebrity side of it. You're dealing with an actor mm. and they are, pr they are professional people and they approach every single project with, you know, with commitment and, you know, they want to be as good as they can be. So I always found dealing with actors an absolute Pleasure. Me too. I yeah. love working with actors. My parents are actors, so yeah. it's sort of in the in the blood. But uh, they're extraordinary beings, aren't they? They are. And it's wonderful the collaboration with them. Okay. And they want to transform themselves. I yeah. mean, a costume is so key for yeah. them to transform themselves, for them to give the best interpretation of that character. Mm. So they really rely on you mm. to help them mm. become that person. That's important. For yes, you. and in and we also rely on them to a certain extent because it's their character. Whatever you do, mm. you know, you read the script and you think, oh well, there's a, a king, there's a queen, there's a whatever. Mm. You cannot start until you get the actor mm. and 
very often the actors are cast right at the last minute. Yes. But until the actor's there, you don't know what the character is. Okay, thank you. Um, I think we haven't got any time for any more clips, but I think we've got time for a question from uh, Queensbridge Primary, which um, says, uh, Joe from Queensbridge Primary. Um, what skills do you need to be a good costume designer? Who was the question from? It was Joe from uh, Queensbridge Primary School. Hello, Joe from Queensbridge Primary School. Um, what skills do you need mm. to be a good costume designer? You need a lot. Um, <laughs> the first thing you need to be is very practical. It's a lot of things that you perhaps wouldn't think. You don't necessarily need to be particularly arty. Um, a very big element is practicality. You need staying power, you need to be good at accounts, unfortunately. Uh. Um, obviously, you need to be visual yeah. as well. But there's a lot of practicality that so goes into So a lot of skills, yeah. yeah. Would you say the same, please? Yes, yeah. de definitely. Sort of a lot of, sort of negotiation skills, yeah. Yeah. having to get on with a lot of very different people from mm. different walks of life. Um, Patience. Yes. <laughs> so a really yeah. good sense of humour, I yeah. think, yeah. always helps. Definitely. <laughs> so yes, definitely yeah. Be a nice person and work hard. What a great yes, sentiment. Yes. Eh? Yes. So unfortunately, that is all we've got time for. That's uh, We've you know, come to the end so quickly there. So um, I'll let you wrap up, Maddie. Um, thanks for tuning in, everyone. We hope you enjoyed hearing from Vin and Keith. Please do join us again tomorrow at 3.30 when we'll be interviewing Dar Daryl Shute from um, Room on the Broom. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>